Rachel Bloom is known best for her role as Rebecca Bunch on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, the award-winning TV show she helped to create and which ran for four seasons. Now, beginning September 6th here in New York City, she will debut a new one-woman musical that she wrote, produced, and stars in. It's titled Death, Let Me Do My Show. And Rachel joins us now. Rachel, it's so great to have you with us. Um, we can't wait to hear about the show. I want to talk to you about it. The elephant in the room, you are a member of the union. The Broadway actors are not on strike. Those shows continue, so you're here to talk about that show. Do you have a sense of how things are going? From the outside, things look so far apart. How soon might you and other actors get back to work on movie and TV sets? Oh, boy, I wish I could tell you. Um... I know that the ball is in the court of the AMPTP. I am also a member of the WGA, so I am on double strike right now. So I'm especially grateful, obviously, to have theater. Um, I don't think anyone knows. I think you'd have to know one of the heads of the studios maybe to know what's going on. Well, we certainly hope it gets worked out. And part of the reason you are in both of those unions is because you do wear so many hats as a writer and a director, a producer, and of course, a star. So let's talk about this new show on Broadway, Death, Let Me Do My Show. I love the title, first of all. How was this idea born and what will it look like when people go check it out in September? So I've been working on this idea for almost two years. Um, I went through kind of hell in 2020 as uh, we all did uh, but basically i gave birth at the start of the pandemic my daughter was in the nicu and then my writing partner passed away after that and yeah uh, even leading up to that trauma being pregnant itself kind of uh gave me this existential crisis almost as a foreshadowing to what was going to happen in 2020 so the show is about death and once you become existentially aware that death is always around and it's always coming for you how do you live your life and that's the question that the show seeks to answer so rachel in in writing you uh, told the independent in an interview that writing for you is emotion and i think that would hold for most writers uh writing a newspaper column i used to try and figure out you know, you can make people laugh, you can make people cry, but can you make people think? And I'm wondering, what goes through your mind as you write in terms of pulling out that emotion in writing this particular play? I think all I can do is be honest about what I'm feeling and also try to say things that I feel have not been said, or at least I haven't heard that are true to myself. And that's kind of what generally motivates me is okay where's a gap that i can fill it's it's almost like being on shark tank a little bit i feel like for every writer like what's a what's a gap in the creative i don't know ether that i can kind of plug and it's also cathartic for me because the more vulnerable i am at least this is so far my experience the more vulnerable and honest i am the more people's reaction is I feel that too. And it's very validating for me that I'm not alone in these thoughts and feelings. Rachel, uh, this is such an important topic because it's so universal. Everyone, unfortunately, deals with loss and grief. And your, your loss in particular was so sudden and so unexpected. And psychiatrists have, you know, compared a sudden loss like that uh, to uh, incredible depression, the deepest of dark depression. And so you deal with mental health also through this. And what have you learned about yourself going through this process? I've, I've learned that there's a part of me that's incredibly optimistic, and then there's a part of me that goes very dark. And one of, I guess my lifelong journey is marrying the two. How do you acknowledge the darkness but stay optimistic because sometimes i can only be in one space or the other and i think a lot of us can be because culturally i don't know especially in this country we're not we don't talk about death we don't talk about the existentialness of death the fact that death is is coming and and i think what it does is it causes us to compartmentalize and 
the show is also very much about how we all went through a trauma in 2020 and are kind of continually going through it. And what do you do with that trauma? I mean, I'm fascinated with the fact that the Spanish flu, I never really heard of much. I mean, I'd heard of it um, partially because my father works in healthcare, but I never really heard much about it. I didn't learn about it in school. And it's because after the Spanish flu, people just kind of wanted to forget about it and move on with their lives. And it also obviously got overshadowed by World War I, but I think this idea of we try to instantly forget and it's terrible for us in the long run because then every new trauma is like a splash of ice water. It's shocking. And you certainly stand up there alone and, and confront all of that and mixing comedy in along the way. It's already been a hit in London, Boston, and Chicago. And now you can see Death, Let Me Do My Show starting September 6th at the Lucille Lortel Theater in New York City. Rachel Bloom, we can't wait to see it. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you so much for having me and for supporting live theater on the show. Really, Absolutely. thank you. We will be there. Thanks, Rachel. That